a gangster on the run. A woman who's been tasked to find his wife. A united police force on the hunt. This is Wild Goose Lake, a movie that is bound to polarize audiences with its unique storytelling, brilliant cinematography, and hauntingly atmospheric music. A stylish crime thriller that leaves the audience with questions at the end. You're either going to love this or hate it. Hi, I'm the Artie Dance from Asian Film Fans, and welcome to our review of Wild Goose Lake. Joel Zenong is a career criminal. In and out of jail, he knows no other life. He belongs to a network of motorcycle thieves who have carved up the local territory by families. But when one of the families complains over Joel's territory allocation, the ringleader of the thieves decides to settle the quarrel with a competition. Whoever can steal the most motorbikes in an allocated period of time wins the rights to the covered territory. It's during this competition where an incident occurs. Joel fatally shoots a police officer by accident. Realizing the severity of the situation, Joel goes into hiding. A police task force is formed to hunt down Joel and a bounty of 300,000 RMB is offered for his capture. Joel, realizing he's been an absent and useless husband and father figure, devises a plan where his wife and child can claim the reward. But to do that, he needs to contact his estranged spouse first. This is where Lu Ai Ai comes in, a bathing beauty, a code word used by the gangsters for prostitute, who works at the Wild Goose Lake, is tasked with finding his wife and leading Jal to a location for his capture. But an unlikely friendship develops between Jal and Lu. While rival gangsters are also hunting Jal, keen to stop him from getting caught and divulging information about their network. It's worth watching, but you'll be in one of two distinct camps afterwards those who loved it and those who hated it. Which one was I? Interestingly, directly after the movie finished, I was in the hated it camp. I felt that the middle portion of the movie betrayed the start and ending, with its rushed gunfights and vague explanations of how incidents in the movie were occurring. It felt like a typical Chinese movie that was being over ambitious for its type. But then a moment of reflection and discussion with others who watched the film highlighted to me that in fact, I really did love it. I was just upset at myself for not getting it at the time I was watching it. It ends as brilliantly as it starts, with enough ambiguity to create hours of discussion about what certain scenes meant in the overall structure of the film. Specifically, the scene at the train station where Lou outlines her plan to Joel but the audience hears nothing due to the noise of the incoming train muting their conversation. Perhaps the noodle scene at the end is the highlight of the film. It's Joel's Last Supper moment. It's carefully shot and well edited, and a perfect climax to an exciting film. Other standout moments include the beheading scene with the forklift shown in all its gory glory. There are times when this film doesn't shy away from showing blood and gore, so be warned in advance. It's worth mentioning the cinematography and editing again, especially evident in the zoo sequence where we see intercutting shots of animal close-ups and the chasing shootout scene. And it's also worth mentioning the way the movie is told, with a deliberate mix-up in the chronology of its order to ensure you're paying attention to what's happening. There is a shootout in the slum apartment complex that contextually makes little sense. Perhaps I wasn't paying enough attention at the time, but I was a little confused by what the police and gangsters were doing there at the same time and who was shooting at who. It then ends with Joel finding his way out of an impossible situation that was semi-immersion breaking. Some of the gangster characters are also very one-dimensional and cartoon villain-like in their presence on screen. The one-track mindedness might be authentic to the persona of the characters, but they come across as shallow and mildly annoying.
After reflecting on the film for 24 hours, I have moved into the Love It camp and will highly recommend this movie to anyone who wants a good suspense thriller or who thinks that the Chinese can't make interesting movies. But this does come with a caveat, that I understand if you immediately dislike the movie. I think it's a natural reaction to have, and if you still feel the same way after 24 hours, then I won't blame you for rating it down. Thank you for watching our review. Don't forget to like, subscribe and ring the bell to see all the latest videos from Asian film fans. You can also follow us on our socials listed on the screen.